What are the five biggest heating mistakes that I see homeowners making? In today's video, we're going to cover those five mistakes and some of the things that I think you should know that could be costing you money or other issues. Number one is maintenance. And this is something that I think is overlooked way too much. Don't turn me off. Don't skip to the next one. Hear me out really quickly. I was talking to a lady this morning and she was telling me, I've had this system since the 90s. This system is 30 years old and I've never had to have someone maintain it annually. I've never had someone lay hands on it every single year. And I listened to her and I did not give her any guff. But the more we talked, she started telling me about some of the issues that she's had, that she's put all this money into it. And never mind the fact that the system is 30 years old, but the fact that over the last several years, she's had to have several technicians out and she's dumped all this money into it. And the more we talked about it, the more I think she started to realize that some of the issues that she's had were directly related to her not having annual maintenance. And so we're not just talking about kicking the tires here. We're not talking about making sure the system is operating. I'm talking about a proper tune up, whatever verbiage you want to use, maintenance, a service. Some guys will call it, they'll say I serviced the system. But whatever you do call that, I'm saying have that system maintained and cleaned and made back new again, cleaning the coils, cleaning the flame sensor, cleaning the fan wheel and the indoor fan motor and so on, making that system as new as possible again. There is not a heating and air system on this planet that I know of that does not require some sort of annual maintenance, at least if nothing else, looking it over by a professional and making sure everything is up to snuff. Saying that, oh, I haven't had it maintained and it's worked does not mean it didn't need maintenance. To me, that's like saying, well, I haven't been changing the oil on my car and it's still running. I don't even know what to say to that. Like if somebody says that to me, well, I, you know, my furnace is burn working fine and I haven't been getting it maintained. Okay. <laughs> but you will, you are going to have problems. And if nothing else, especially when we're talking about furnaces, especially having that system looked over, having a proper combustion analysis and the heat exchanger checked, making sure that it's not letting carbon monoxide in your home to me is a given. I mean, I would not want to put my family at risk and someone telling me that they don't think maintenance is necessary simply tells me that they are not understanding that they could be putting their family at risk. Number two is humidity. I don't think people in the heating season think about humidity enough. Have you ever had your heat set to on? You've got the temperature turned up kind of high and you still feel kind of cold. You've got that thermostat up on 73, 74 degrees and it's still Geez, it's, it's still cold in here, daggone it. Let me go get some socks put on these feet. And a lot of times folks do not realize that it's not a temperature issue, but that it is a humidity issue, that the humidity is way too low in the home. It can cause other issues with the home, especially if you have wood, things like hardwood floors can be affected by low humidity. Obviously your comfort level, you feeling cold, but also in addition to all of that, the safety of the air that you're breathing can also be putting you at risk as well. We've done other videos where we talked about humidity levels, the ideal humidity range. There's different philosophies on that, but I think most pros in our trade would agree that if you could at least keep it between say 50 and 60%, some guys would say that range is larger one way or the other, depending on where you are in the country. But most I think would agree if you could just keep it in that between 50 and 60% range, get it above 50%. If it's dropped lower than that, and there's an array of products out there, humidifiers, different options out there, talk to your local professional. And I would defer to them on what they think is best for your home, but just having that looked at, look at the humidity levels. And that may play a big role in some of the problems that you're having. Number three is airflow. We don't talk about this one enough on our channel, but a lot of homeowners will do things like not change their air filter as often as they should, right? That's kind of a given. I don't know that anybody changes them as often as they should. Yours truly included. I try to remember to do it. I try to remember when I pay my mortgage payment to change air filters and do some of the other things like give my dogs their medicine and just some of the other monthly things I have to remember to do. I try to do it all at once. And I always tell homeowners to remember something, you know, pick out something that you do once a month, like pay your power bill, for example, use that as the, oh, it's time for me to do this again. It's time for me to replace my air filter or at least 
check that air filter. But the other thing that I see a lot of folks do is they'll block the vents. They'll have a piece of furniture over it or in front of it. They'll have something else just simply blocking that vent in one way, shape or form. And that is also just as detrimental to your system. Anything blocking the return so it can't get air pulled in well or blocking the supply where it's trying to push air into that room, any of that can affect the overall static pressure, the overall amount of air being pushed through that system and overall health of your system. You could have more breakdowns just simply because that system is starving for air. Number four is I don't think enough homeowners think about balance point enough, especially homeowners that have heat pump systems, understanding that their heat pump is able to heat down to a certain temperature and these systems have come a long way. It used to be we would set dual fuel systems and other types of systems with a heat pump around 40 degrees, sometimes as low as 30 degrees. But early on in my career, it was rare that we ever set the balance point, meaning the temperature that we would bring on auxiliary heating, possibly even locking out the outdoor unit in certain situations, certain types of systems. It was rare that we would do that much lower than 30 degrees. These days, we're seeing systems that can heat well below zero degrees Fahrenheit and still produce heat into that home. And now we're not just talking about heat pump systems. There are other types of systems as well that have different stages, different modes, if you will, on that heating and air system. But just understanding that just because your balance point is currently set at 30 degrees doesn't mean you can't go a little lower than that to try to save some energy. Maybe just going down to 25 degrees, maybe that might save you 10 bucks a month. We did a whole video on this where we talked about balance point. I'll put that down in the description of this video in case you want to watch that after watching this one. But we talked about setting the balance point and how every house is different. I think a good handy homeowner, especially if you're the type that you like to get your hands dirty, you like to get in there and understand how things work, such as your heating and air system, understand balance point and understand what's the most optimal temperature for your system to switch between stages or modes would save you a lot of money in some cases. And number five, Biggest mistake I see homeowners make when it comes to the heating of their home, and that is they don't focus enough on the home itself. They're too busy worrying about trying to fix the heating and air system, fix the side of things that is trying to, you know, dump air into that home, warm air into your home. And they don't look at things like gaps and seals around doors and windows. They don't look at things like the home envelope, maybe looking at sealing the home better, insulating the home better, maybe other things like double pane windows and just overall trying to alleviate some of the problems that are keeping their house cooler anyway. We've done other videos on stack effect and how that can affect your home. And then finally, just the small things like turning on your ceiling fans, running in the counterclockwise orientation, other things like opening your curtains during the day so sunlight can kind of help heat your home. There's a lot of things where I think homeowners would do themselves a lot of favors if they would just look at little things like that and give their heating system a break. <laughs> like give it a little bit of help here in those cases. Understand heat rises, understand that the system on the first floor, if you've got an upstairs and downstairs system, maybe having to work a little extra hard because of that heat rising. I've seen some homeowners not even close their outside foundation vents in the winter time. And that is not just stack effect where you've got this air being pulled into the home and it's now cooling the home, but just in general, just common sense saying you've got this outside cold air and there's no barrier to entry here. It's just getting pulled inside the house. You're going to have problems. You're going to have a high heating bill. So that's my five. A few other honorable mentions might be look into some of the cool thermostats today that are designed to help you save money on your utility bills. Other honorable mentions might be making sure that things like the drain are clear. If you have a condensing furnace system. And of course, today, more than ever, we're talking about some of the new refrigerants that are coming out and things you've got to take into account because of that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Did I miss something? Is there something that you're concerned about? I'd love to hear about that. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about the safest HVAC system for your home and some that are not so safe. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.